This tutorial will walk you through the basics of using the tablet and getting everything set up for this first practice image that will be due on Classroom. But to get started, the most important thing to always remember when working with the tablet is to add a new layer. So I'm going to go over to the bottom of my layers panel and right next to that trash bin is the new layer button. I'm going to click that to create a new layer. That way as I'm drawing, I can hide my background image and see just my drawing. And then that way as well, if I mess up, I'm able to erase it versus erasing the background picture. So always important to include a new layer when you're getting started. Next, we're gonna set up the paintbrush settings. So at the top of your screen, once you select the paintbrush is where all of those settings will be found. Um, if you click the little drop down arrow, there's the general settings for your paintbrush so you can adjust the size. And if you hover over your screen, you can see the size as well. Um, or if you're um, on your keyboard and you're using the little bracket symbols, you can increase and decrease the size of your, um, of your brush as well. So if you're again on your image and just clicking that, those little um, brackets that are right underneath the delete button, you can increase and decrease the size of your brush. So I'm going to make it small enough that I can really uh, outline some of the detail of these shapes. If you click on the little folder next to the paintbrush settings, there's a bunch of different brush options. So for this project, you can um, play around, try out a bunch of different brushes. If you go online and search uh, free photo, Photoshop brush download, there's going to be a bunch of different options as well for you. But I'm just going to use a regular brush for now. And then that opacity can be set to 100. If you want it to be somewhat see-through, that's where you're going to switch and lower your opacity. And then the blending mode, start out, set that to normal. Make sure smoothing is set to zero. If you have smoothing set to 100 or anywhere around there, it's going to make your brush lag. So I would set that um, down to zero. And then I'm going to get started. If you hold down a uh, command plus on your keyboard, it will allow you to zoom in. So I would definitely zoom in on your uh, picture here. Or if you just use the keypad, you can uh, zoom in with two fingers as well. But I'm going to start and I'm going to double click on my layer here. And I'm going to call this star layer. So that way as I am um, going through, I can separate everything out. Colors are down at the bottom. I'm going to double click on the square that's on the top to pull up the color settings. I'm just going to grab a yellow for now then hit OK. And with the tablet now, I'm just going to outline and fill in some of these shapes. If you have straight lines that you're trying to color in or fill in, if you hold down shift on your keyboard and click, oops, Start out, click first, and then hold down shift, and click where you want your line to start and end. It will connect the dots for you and give you those straight lines. So you can go through, fill everything in. So again, I'm just taking my time coloring things in. Um, and then you would go through and finish out the rest of the stars, but I'm gonna move on here. And I'm gonna add another layer. And this is going to be my sky layer. And I'm actually going to move my sky layer underneath my star layer. That way as I paint it will go in the background underneath my stars. So I'm going to grab a color for the sky, do a uh, dark blue here, and I'm going to increase the size of my brush. And since again this is in the background it will go behind the stars. So you can fill that in and then if you notice that there are spaces like what I have that you have to go back to fill in, you can just click back on that star layer and fill in those stars. If you had wanted to start with this background, you could. You'll just have to play around with hiding your different layers so you can see through. Um, at this point, I would add, once you have that sky filled in, add another layer for the mountains. So I'm going to double click and call this uh, mountains. And that will be for all of this in the background. Um, I'm going to have that on top of my sky layer so that as I'm painting, it'll cover parts of that sky that I went over the mountains with. 
So I'm going to hide that sky layer, have my mountain selected, choose uh, more of a green color, but you can choose whatever color you would like for this. I'm going to make that brush a little bit smaller. And again, if you hold down shift, you can create the outline with those straight lines and then color that in. And I'm just going to go right over the houses because then I can go back and hide that layer for the houses. So again, you would want to fill all of that in. You can bring your sky back so you have that sky in the background. If you want more sharp edges, that's where you would choose a brush that's not feathered like mine is. Then I'm going to add another layer. Call this my house layer. Hide my mountains. And then I'm going to go in and play around with the size of my brush and start outlining and uh, creating the houses there. When you are using your tablet and drawing different areas, the amount of pressure that you put on your mouse or on the pen is going to change the amount of pressure that your line is. So, and I think at the top here, I don't have that selected, but if you click on this, it will allow that, um, that edit to be more visible. So right now I'm barely pressing with the pen and now I'm pressing a lot harder so you can vary um, what your brush looks like as you're coloring and shading things in. But take your time with this, go through those layers, keep adding more. The more you add, the easier it will be as you're um, filling in the backgrounds and places like that. When you're finished, you can save it as a JPEG, so file, save as, and then go ahead and turn that in.